We've been looking at weapons of our warfare, and this is our memory verse, and I'd like you to quote it with me as we do every week as we start. 2 Corinthians 10, 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. We are finishing up on prayer a little bit and fasting a whole lot of the remaining of the, of the lesson. I left off on what we really are finishing the prayer aspect, although prayer and fasting will go together when we get into fasting, that I ran across uh, Crosswalk as a source that I use off of the internet many times just for ideas or I want to see what they think. And I came across the, the top five examples of prayer that they, they talk to other preachers about and, uh, and godly men and godly women. And so they took a survey. And this is the, here are the five prayers out of the Bible that have touched their lives and that they've been able to use as examples and they've, that God has blessed them in wonderful ways. These prayers aren't necessarily how we pray word for word, but I would say this to anybody. If you pray the scriptures, if you pray the verses that are read and mean them from your heart, that is fine. I cannot tell you that the, the first one, the Lord's Prayer, is something that we would, it's just Jesus said that to his disciples. The, G, the disciples came to Jesus and said, Lord, help, we need some help on prayer. Would you teach us how to pray? And he gave them the pattern of this to do, and it's a pattern for us today. And that's why it is, it is actually number one that came in off of that list in their survey. And just, I'm going to read them today, and just think of them in your heart. All right. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as it is in heaven, uh, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but, to de but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. You know, it starts off with God, our Father, and it ends with God, the, our Creator, our ma the Magnificent. And in between, there's a lot of things. I heard Jack Hiles preach a sermon on this, and he said, I want the takeaway that I want you to understand and he was preaching probably about 10,000 at that time. He said, the takeaway is this, God will take care of your needs. Give us this day our daily bread. God will take care of our needs immediately so that we can get about the business of taking care of the needs and meeting the needs and sharing Christ with the, with the world. He says, that's the heart of the, world, of the Lord's prayer. And I'll never forget that. I pick up on stuff like that. I, pick, I appreciate Pastor Chad when he says, this is the takeaway today. I'm all ready for that. I think that's really good. I also know he's ending too. So, but uh, not because of that. So this is, that's my comment here. The second one is the prayer of Jabez. You know, it's just one verse. And Jabez called on the God of Israel saying, once again, here's the magnificent God, the God of Israel, saying, oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my coast and that your hand might be with me and that you would keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. In the Lord's prayer, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, Jabez prays, Lord, keep me from evil. How much we need to as God's people to ask God, Lord, I am just so prone to wander. I'm prone to evil. I'm prone to this. And Lord, grab me by the arm and pull me as if I was a child running, going to run out in traffic and get hit by a car. And yank me back and pull me and do that, Lord. Remind me. And yet there's wonderful other principles within this. There's a book out, most of you know, and the book is incredible. The book is excellent. It's, a, it's not just a good read. It's a good study. It's a good thought thing. Then here was an unusual one that popped up. It was Jonah's prayer for salvation and seven or eight verses and said, Jonah's speaking and said, I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord. He's in the belly's whale. He's not happy. 
And he heard me, and out of the belly of hell cried I, and he heard my voice. And you've cast me into the deep, in the midst of the seas, and the floods compassed me about. All thy billows and waves have passed over me. I bet he never swam again. (laughs) Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight. Yet I will look again towards your holy temple. The waters compassed me about, even to the soul. The depth closed me round about. The weeds were wrapped about, the seaweeds actually, were wrapped around my head. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains, and the earth with her bars was about me forever. forever. Yet you have, here's the good part, yet you have brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came in unto thee in thine holy temple. Why in the world would this be number three? And as I stepped back and looked at these five top five prayers of all these preachers and great women of faith, of why why these, why this one? How did that pop in there? I saw... I saw, I saw the, the story of someone who was called of God to go save a city, and yet he ran. He was afraid. He got scared. And he said, I don't want to do that. I can't do that, Lord. I can't go, I can't go into my enemy's capital and tell them that you're going to kill them and, die, and they're going to get judged and banished. And so he ran. And so I saw this, that there's not, there's not anywhere that you or I can run so far that God can't bring us back. You can't run and hide so far that there's not a return road. You can't. And that makes this an incredible prayer just in that self. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy, but I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. Salvation is always of the Lord. Remember, salvation in the Hebrew word and in the Greek word, salvation, being saved, just means being rescued. That's the definition of salvation. We've been rescued from hell and from self and from sins. We've been rescued from raunchiness in the world. Ah, And that we rejoice in and we say, Praise God. David's prayer for deliverance. Listen to this one. Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Many there are which say to my soul, there's no help for him in God. Selah. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter up of my head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. Selah. I laid me down and slept. I awakened, for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that have set themselves against me round about. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for thou hast smitten all mine enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongs unto the Lord. Thy blessing is on thy people. Selah. David knew what it was to have fight enemies, Philistines, Amorites, people around about him. But the most tragic of all was when he had to fight his own people, his own son. And he seemed to get boxed in. Armies, he ran. Armies, his son's armies chased him. They wanted to kill him. And he was out in one of those times that he was not in the empire. He was not in the palace, but he was the king. And he was surrounded And he had nowhere to go but up. And so while Jonah is about you can't run so far and go anywhere that God can't get you back, sometimes the world seems to just cave in on us and surround us. That It's not that I want to run, it's I can't move. And at the pressures of life and the problems and the toils and things of life, the answer is look up and pray. Prayer, prayer, prayer. And the last one is Hannah's prayer of praise. And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoices in the Lord. Mine horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over mine enemies because I rejoice in your salvation. There is none holy as the Lord, for there is none beside thee. Neither is there any rock like our God. 
talk no more so exceedingly proudly. Let not your arrogance come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty men are broken, and they that stumbled are girded with strength. They that were full have hired out themselves for bread, and they that were hungry ceased, so that the barren hath borne seven, and she that hath many children is wax feeble. The Lord kills, makes alive. He brings down to the grave and brings up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low and lifts up. He raises up the poor out of the dust and lifts up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory for the pillars of the earth of the Lord's and he hath set the world upon them. He will keep the feet of his saints, and the wicked shall be silent in darkness, for by strength shall no man prevail. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. Out of heaven shall he thunder upon them. The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth, and he shall give strength unto his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. You know the story, of of course, of Hannah, and the prayer, and the child, and uh, here you see her exalting and understanding, again, the troubles, and the perils, and the issues, and what people say, and the, the cultural pressures that get put on a person, and yet she knew to turn to the Lord, and to trust God, and to pray, and to trust the Lord for his hand to work upon her life. I got news I may I remind you, as I need reminded, God's promises are good for us today. They were great yesterday, but they're better today. They are. Just read them. Get to, get to know God's word, but get to the Lord in prayer. These people laid their hearts out, and if I could leave anything as we leave these five things, they shared who they were. And prayer has to be personal, ladies and gentlemen. Prayer can't just be a resuscitation and a uh, 10 minutes with the Lord or a trip down the road and a grocery list of things that you need and concerns. Prayer needs to be developed as does a relationship. And just think of it this way. Most of you have have married in life. Um, You know, I I love Carol. We've we had anniversary 48 a few days ago, so we're under two years to 50. That's not, po- I'm not even 50 years old yet. So that is not possible. That cannot be. But you know, when I met her and I started dating her, she, I wanted to know, every, I wanted to know all about her. I wanted to spend time with her. I didn't, I didn't want to tell her. I didn't care if she knew, got to know me. I wanted to know her. And so my time, I'd, I'd, go, I'd be at her house. Anytime my mom and dad would let me go over there, and anytime her, her mom and dad would let me in. And I would, I, when we'd go for drives or go out on a date or something, we were developing relationship. We were getting to know each other. We were spending time. All right? That's what God that's how we get to know the Lord. We're just going to have to spend time. We're going to have to, de- to develop a relationship. All right, I, gotta fe- I have to finish today, so let's move. I'm sorry. I get carried away and get too excited over God's things. So, um, Prayer and fasting. All right, all of you have heard fasting. There's fasting diets out. The secular world's got all sorts of them. You know, do this and fast here and fast this and do that. Let, let's get back to basics and just what does the Bible say? If you want to get on some fasting stuff that's out there, that's okay, I guess. But don't, don't call it God things. Call it you're on a diet trying to lose weight. That's what to call it. Now, get this. And he said unto them, this is Jesus, this kind can come forth by nothing but prayer and fasting. Uh, You're going to see the the whole story here in just a minute. But Jesus told his disciples, they came in and they were powerless. Oh, you told us to go and do this and go do this and you could heal people. I could heal people. Uh, we, We had your power and we couldn't do it. Or why couldn't this happen? And Jesus said, there are some things that prayer does not 
is not going to, I'm just going to say it, not going to cut it. There are things in life and issues in life that there has got to be a boost to our prayer life and a refocusing and just a reboot of it. I had iTunes pop up on my computer and said, you're due for a download. Would you like this? And this da- and they say, the iTunes says, this download is about this, 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 and this, and this. I'm watching it carefully to say, and to spy on you. <laughs> to show up in there somewhere. Although it's in there in the background, I'm sure, somewhere. And so I get this, I get this thing, and then it loads up, and I'm working all along, and it, says, and it pops up and says, I'm done. You're downloaded. It says, now for this to work, you need to turn your computer off and reboot. So it was a time of restarting the program. Sometimes we just need to back up and restart our prayer life, and fasting is going to be that jolt to do it. Okay, let's move on. Introduction. Fast or fasting. In the Hebrew, the Hebrew word for fasting is tzom. You, you don't say tzom, but you sort of tzom. It's like an extra spit s. So stay clear. So why don't you say that with me, but maybe look down, all right? Ready to say it? Here we go. Tzom. Okay, tzom. It literally means, in the, in the Hebrew, not to eat. So you've got that down, and I've got that down. That makes sense, all right? In the Greek, it's nestia. Say that with me. Nestia. It's not nesti. I knew that you were thinking that and say, wow, that's up my alley. So when I fast, I can have nesti. All right. No. Okay. Not necessarily. It's nestia. Now, in the Greek, when Jesus spoke, it was more powerful. It just wasn't, it just didn't mean not to eat. It literally was screaming, no food. That's what it means. It's you got to get excited over it. How many here love to go without food? <laughs> I walk by that table. What, Shane, you need to talk quicker because <laughs> my, my hands move fast. And uh, you're either that look over at me and I'll, I'll stop. I'll be good. But that, that's too much good stuff over there. There's a couple moon pies left, guys, if you want to get it before the day's over. But no food. Our body says to us, eat away, get it, have it, enjoy it. Let's get into this. Number one, fasting in normal language means going without food. Water is not forbidden, but encourage and drink. In the scripture, it said, it never taught, you got to drink. If you're going to pray and fast, you must drink. Water. Yes, drink, water not our seas. Water. You, are, you say, well, I'm on a water. There's no such thing as a water fast in the Bible. It's not. In fact, you're, it's the opposite, sort of. You need to drink. We're always called to say no to sin, but not always to food. So we are not always called to fast. You say, well, I, I'm going to fast every Monday, every Monday, every Monday. God, if that's between you and the Lord, that is it. But that doesn't mean we all have to do that. Nor do I think it's a good idea to start saying, I'm going to do this, do this, do this every Monday. It gets, you say, why are you saying that? It becomes more of I've got to do it than I want to do it. Because, oh, here comes Monday. Now I've got, now I need to fast again. I'm, let me load up on food Sunday night. That's what usually happens. Fasting not only detoxifies the body, it also, and this is, where, this, is, this is where this is biblical. We leave the world right here. When we fast, our body does detox. Oh, I hate to say this, but the sugars start to go. The breads, those are sugars. They go more, and some more go, and my body starts to just become how God created it. But what really matters in the fasting is that it humbles our soul and humbles the flesh when it's done for God, and it brings us, starts to bring us into line with God's will and finding God's will. Because all of a sudden, if we're saying no to food, 
we're knocking down, a, we're, we're pounding, we're telling our body, no, the flesh is not going to win, but the spirit is. So all of a sudden, we're leaving just praying, aren't we? Because you know what? We'll go home and we'll pray today at some time or another. But we'll eat too. And we'll snack or we'll have coffee in our hands or we'll do things. But when you're down to, down to fasting, we're down, we're down to nitty gritty stuff. Fasting precipitates, get, get this, a showdown with demonic power. Jesus fasted in the wilderness and Satan came at him. Mark 4, uh, Matthew 4, by speaking the word of God in the face of great pressure, Jesus defeated Satan, and he moved through the power of the Holy Spirit and proved as a man that it can be overcome. In this way, he was our perfect example in everything. Now, I've taught this all throughout a couple of series lately in Matthew 4. Fasting examples. The apostles also fasted Frequently afterwards, that is to say, when the first missionaries were sent out, when the elders were brought into their offices in Acts chapter 14, there was prayer and fasting as to who, who gets ordained as elders. Lord, this is a serious pick. These are serious choices. We need to be in line with the will of God. The centurion, Cornelius, was seeking the Lord with prayer and fasting. He was not saved yet. But somehow he knew he needed Jesus Christ as Savior, and Peter got sent to him. In fact, Peter was on his way to witness to him. Um, where was he? In Joppa, I think? Or was he in uh, Caesarea? He was in Caesarea. And Peter was on the way to witness to him, and yet Cornelius was serious about his soul as a lost man. Amen. Paul exhorts us to have times of abstinence and marriage, that you may give yourselves a fasting and prayer. He stresses therein that he is proving himself in fasting to be a servant of God. If you need a reboot as a child of God, you need to have a, a, a meal or have a couple of meals or maybe a day of prayer and fasting. Okay? Okay. Fasting, the owner's manual. This is not mine, but I try to use, I got your attention back, see? I put this on this morning. Before doing fasting of any kind, if you have a medical issue at all, if there's, if there's something in your, in your medically, physically, that if you go without a meal, your heart stops, or your blood pressure soars or drops or your sugar level does something. And I'm just, these are all things that, that we wrestle with, people of our age. And so before you tackle that, if you think that you need to speak with your doctor and say, hey, can I, can I fast a meal and start with a meal, you should ask and should do that. It's not a bad idea, especially if you're on a lot of meds, because meds mix with foods, don't they? So to leave out a block of your day of, of food, you can't necessarily go without the meds, but what will happen if there isn't the food to, your, to leave, your, leave yourself with a stomach a day later, and not 70 ulcers? So... That's a warning. So just don't say, yeah, 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 I'm going to do this. Okay, consider. Okay, here's some stuff for you. Sort of a manual. We're told to pray and fast, but we're told to pray more often. In fact, we're told to pray all the time. We're told to pray and fast, but we are told to pray a whole lot and fast not so often. By fasting and prayer, it puts us in the best possible position for a victory. Okay, what's the playbook on this? Here's some things we need to know as we go to the Lord in prayer and we choose to fast. And by the way, when we fast, we need to take the time that we would be, have, have been eating and spend that time in prayer 
But let me add this to you. If this is done right, you can be, you may, if you're home, like Carol and I are retired, you could be, you could be working and praying. Right? It's not just I'm praying for this 15 minutes that I'm not eating, but you're gonna find you're gonna you're gonna be praying through your day. You're gonna find that because God's at work, but there's a battle going on also. So God, understand this, God always calls us just to pursue, pursue good stuff, righteousness. Whatsoever things are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. That's a good starting verse. Memorize that verse. Put that in your mind as you go to the Lord in prayer. That'll purify your mind of the crud of the world. Huh. And then we're loaded with it. Number two, God desires only good for his children. Do you know that God just wants, he just wants best things for us? <laughs> I think that's just really good. Just like you want the best for your kids. You know, the daughter that we have left, Dawn, I want the best for her. I want the best for my son-in-law. I, I want the, God's best for my three grandkids that I have. I want God's best. So I'm going to say something to you right now because of your kids and things like this. If you're praying for your family, if you're praying for a husband or a brother or sister or a child that's far from God or needs to be saved or even grandchildren, if you're praying, the salvation of a family is on fasting level. Occasionally it calls for God's people to fast, to pray for family. Now, let me let something in on you. Help you out as much as you can. Even if, and I don't want to use the word only praying, if you're not fasting, but you are praying for your kids, a son, a wayward relative, or someone like that, when you see them, you need to let them know you're praying for them. You need to tell them. You need to tell them in love. You need to say, look, I'm not much of a Christian, but I want to let you know I love the Lord, and I'm, I'm, I've been praying for you. You're, you're in some rough stuff. You're having troubles right now. You once, you once were dynamic in church. Now you don't even go. I am praying that God touches your life and God does whatever is necessary to bring you back because I love you. If you'll start to, that will haunt them. God's Holy Spirit, they, you'll go home, you'll hang up the phone, you'll whatever, and they have heard that and they know that, that they matter and that you're praying for them. Tell you what, if I was far from God and you walked up and you say, I'm praying for you, I'm going to say, you know, I can get along with you okay and put up with you, but now, now you're putting, putting the Holy Spirit on me? Watch out. Watch out. Do not overcome, e uh, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. See, when we get into prayer the right way, we, our attention isn't diverted. And temptations and false benefits just sort of blow away. And those kind of things aren't there anymore. God gives us incredible example. Fasting reduces the influence of our self-will and invites the Holy Spirit to do more intense work in us. Here we go. We're back to some prayers. But it's not just prayers, but it's prayer and fasting. Watch here. So I turned to the Lord God and pleaded with him in prayer and petition and what? Fasting. Fasting. And in sackcloth and ashes, I prayed to the Lord my God, and I confessed, Lord, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of love for those who love him and keep his commandments, we have sinned and done wrong. We have been wicked and we have rebelled. We have turned away from your commandments and laws. Wow. Okay, so number one, and you're going to see some more of this. The only way we're going to turn America around and turn hearts of politicians and turn culture is this is beyond prayer, ladies and gentlemen. We need as individuals just go to the Lord and say, Lord, 
when I need, I'm going to fast, and I'm going to fast, and I'm going to pray for America. And I'm only going to pray for America. And pick a time. David was praying for the nation and seeking, Lord, oh God, I plead for you. Bring us back to you. That's the only way it's going to happen. There's going to have to be times in our, in our life, in month, in our months that we live, that we just take some time and pray and fast over our country. Jonah for the salvation. Here's Jonah back again. He's got the seaweed off of him. He's cleaned himself up and he's gone to Nineveh. Okay, what I didn't tell you was Nineveh had just been where Jonah lived in Israel and just devastated them and burned everything. Killed tens of thousands of, of Jonah's people and friends and grabbed a bunch and taken them back to Nineveh as slaves. That sounds sort of familiar. You see, the Babylonian Empire is about 50 years behind that doing the same thing. And so the northern kingdom's gone, and here's Jonah, the prophet of God, called of God. God calls him and says, Jonah, I got a mission for you. Lord, I love you. I'll do anything for you. And the Lord says, I've got something, and if you'll do exactly as I say, and not only will I protect you, you'll hear, you'll hear what I say, and you're going to have a rejoicing heart. Yeah, Lord, that sounds great. He says, I want you to rise, rise, he says, and go to Nineveh, that great city, and tell them I'm giving them days to repent or I will destroy their city. And Jonah said, I ain't so happy now about this. Because he didn't want to go to the people that just want to kill him. The Ninevites believed God. A fast was proclaimed, and all of them, from the greatest to the least, put, when God made that promise that that city would get saved, it didn't start with the, with the guys out and the shepherds in the field. It started with the Jonah went to the king, and it started with the king, and it just trickled right down. Tell you what, I don't care if it's President Trump or give, put, a, put another president's name in there or something, what do you think would happen if somebody would get up and, and just say, I am a child of God, I'm not our senators. I am, I'm not ashamed of Jesus Christ. Do you remember the day that when politicians were running for office, they made sure they got to church and were seen in church? Now today when they're announcing office, they don't want to know that they don't want to be seen anywhere near one or that they've ever gone. That's got to change. And the way that that changes is prayer and, prayer and fasting. When Jonah, this is all, you go home and read this yourself. The proclamation, he praised God, God saved him. Paul and Barnabas for the pastor and the elders. Paul and Barnabas also appointed elders in every church with prayer and fasting. Before they turned a church that they started in the missionary journeys, they prayed and they fasted that God would raise up and call the right pastors. Jesus to his disciples over faith. Here's the verse. And he said to them, because of the littleness of your faith, for truly I say to you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you'll say to this mountain, move from here and there and it will move and nothing will be impossible to you. But this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. It's not going to go out except by prayer and fasting. Nehemiah for the city walls and the people. When I heard these things, I sat, he sat, he sat down when he heard all about Jerusalem, was in rumbles. He sat down and wept. And for some days I mourned and fasted and prayed before the before God of heaven. Here's a man who didn't know what God wanted him to do, but yet he sat down and prayed for his, for his nation. You can, you can say, well, they prayed for this nation, this nation over here. Folks, these are all political things. These are all towns that had rulers and administrators and people in high places that were far from God, had no concern for God whatsoever. And yet there was the burden of the nation and for the people. Got news for you, the nation isn't in Washington. The nation has two shores and a, a lot of borders. It's us. It's our next door neighbor. It's the people that we live near. Jesus and Showtime. This is good. To him who, 
to some who were competent of their righteousness and looked on, down on everyone else. Jesus told this story. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other tax collector. And as he tells this story, Jesus says, and to pray, and one a, Phar- a Pharisee, and there was boo in the crowd. And the other a tax collector, boo in the crowd. Two despicable people. And the Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I'm not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like <laughs> the tax collector right here. I ain't like him. I fast twice a week and I give a tenth of... This guy fasts twice a week. But he did it because he had to do it and he was doing it for a show. And so if you fast, it's not important that other people know. But it's important that the people that you are fasting for know. If you pray, go and pray and fast, I don't need to know that you're praying and fasting. But think about this. If you got on your computer and you, you sent a, an email to, to Congressman Charlie Crist and said, I'm, and I've done this. I said, I am praying for you. And I've just put my name and I've let it go. He knows what party I am. And I know what party he is. I even know everything. And it doesn't, it doesn't matter. I'm praying for you. I'll get a note from somebody else, and I will do that. I will go to their offices, and I, I will tell the group. I don't get to see the, the elected person. I see the byproducts of the elected people. <laughs> and I will, why are you here? I said, I just wanted to let, I just stopped in today. I just wanted to let the congressman or the senator know I, I've been praying for him. He's got some hard decisions coming up. You should see draws, jaws drop. Now, so last time, the last time I was actually in, as I was left, the main secretary that fielded everybody coming in, she says, come over here, sir. And she says, thank you. I'm a child of God, too. And I said, amen, I need to come back. That's good. Paul to the Thessalonians, rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks for this in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus Okay, here's the takeaway, and I'm, I'm done today. Fasting has absolutely nothing to do, turn your TV off. If you're going to pray and fast, tur- if you're going to do it over a meal time or you designate a time period, turn your phone off, tur- turn the doorbell off, turn the TV off, turn the radio off. You need to be by yourself. Okay, Have your, let your wife go shopping. Tell her to go shopping. Get her out of the house. Or better yet, when she's actually out of the house. That's a good opportunity. Or, ladies, your husband hanging around, messing up stuff and things like that, and it's time to pray and fast, tell him he needs to go buy something. Go to, go to tool time shop or something. Go find a moon pie. But it, it, it's, it's a, you and I know what needs to be done. But if if there's anything to take away from this, where are you just in your prayer life? And secondly, where does fasting, where's fasting going to fit into your life? Remember, fasting is the is the reboot for our lives and a refocusing, but it's on the big stuff. The way I read it in scripture, it's when souls are in balance with eternity in matter, and when nations are in balance and in, in, in danger and hanging in the judgment of God. That's, a, that's how I read it. If you really want to know where it fits in the scheme of everything. All right, I did this again and I've gone over. I, again, I'm going to tell you right now, I do not apologize <laughs> at all. I don't at all. Wayne? Amen. Thank you. I've got them too. Our our kids need prayer. They do. They do. When God answers prayer, you ought to share it with other with other people too. Really do. I I've covered. I can't cover prayer in three weeks, four weeks like I have. 
You have been terrific in this. I've been telling you next week is the, is, is the name of Jesus. It's not. That's the last one, number seven. You picked up a lesson number five today. Actually, it's the power of our testimony that we're going to look at next week. You have no idea the power that you have, that the testimony, that the fact that you know Jesus Christ is your Savior, you have no idea of what that can do to stir and to change lives. It's incredible. Lord, we are really excited about, about things of God. We look and we read in the Bible of these powerful things and we cry out and say, Lord, do that again. But we know there's not a Nineveh and there's not, there's not a, a belly of a whale. There's not a Daniel in Babylon. We, th those are events have, have come and gone. And so those, those patterns will not be duplicated exactly like that. But Lord, you are working around the globe right now. There are mighty and wonderful things. And we know those things don't come but by prayer and fasting. So whatever the issues, the monstrous things in our life, things that matter to us, now you know what we're called to. Stir us with that. Some hard stuff said today. Lord, thank you for loving us. Thank you for forgiving how far we can get. Bless your people, and we'll just praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless.